New York State Drinking Water Council was established by the state legislature in 2017 as one of several measures intended to maintain and improve drinking water supply and its infrastructure. The mission and charge of the council is to make recommendations to the New York State Department of Health regarding emerging contaminants in drinking water. Broadly, the council is to make annual recommendations as to the listing of specific emerging contaminants for possible monitoring. The legislation also specifically directed the council to address 1,4-dioxane and the perfluorinated compounds PFOS and PFOA in its initial deliberations. Today, I'm pleased to introduce two members of the Drinking Water Council to discuss these accomplishments and to offer their insights. I'd like to begin by uh, offering congratulations to uh, Stan and Paul uh, relative to the completion of what I observed was a difficult uh, initial process uh, with the Drinking Water Council. Paul, can you start us off with your thoughts as to what it meant to you to be part of this process? How was it to be uh, on the council from your perspective? Well, it was certainly an honor. Uh, they, they picked folks uh, based on their backgrounds, uh, myself and Stan. We both bring different things to the table, so it was uh, really good to work with Stan on the Drinking Water Quality Council uh, because he has uh, a lot more practical experience than I have as a, an engineer where I've, I've kind of learned more later uh, in life. Uh, our challenge was to uh, provide our point of view and concerns from a practical perspective where uh, a lot of the folks on the board were, were more uh, theoretical, for lack of a better term, and we certainly had our frustrations. But at the end of the day, we got to where we are now, and uh, we have to you know, move forward with these new regulations. Stan, my, my recollection is there were, there were five council meetings uh, leading to the council's uh, vote on a, on a recommended MCL and moving forward. Can you kind of describe that whole process and, and what you envision relative to, do you think it'll set a pattern for uh, future council meetings? I do think that it'll be a pattern going forward. Um, a lot of the council members wanted specific information before they moved the vote forward to set an MCL or make the recommendation for the MCL. Um, you know, it's, we, we had to understand what, what we were recommending to, to the uh, health department. Uh, as far as the you know implications to the public water suppliers and you know certain council members wanted to know what treatment technologies were going to be available to remove that contaminant others wanted to know the health effects and the to toxicological data mm -hmm. so I, I do think that you know we need this information for any particular contaminant that we're going to consider moving forward in the future yeah. I'd like both of you to kind of give me your thoughts as to what the new regulations might mean uh, both the public water suppliers on Long Island and those throughout the state. Uh, the water suppliers, regardless of how great a job they do and, and how much work they put into the water treatment process, uh, between the public and the media putting all of this information out there, um, the environmental groups, I, I just think it's going to continue to be very challenging for the water suppliers um, to answer to the public and, and, and put all the treatment process in place to assure everybody and give them the comfort level that they need that the the water coming out of that tap is safe to drink. One of the things, because yeah. I always deal with customers, particularly Hicksville's been hard hit with 1,4 dioxane, and what allays my customers' fears and people, also outside my district as I interact with family and friends who have questions, is that I tell them you don't need to be afraid of the water. Uh, you know, it's technology. It's the process of ever improving uh, quality. The technologies testing at lower and lower levels, you could find more and more compounds, and you're just getting very, very highly treated water, which uh, you know it has to you know get the public to be confident that you know you're being proactive, not reactive. You got to keep it in perspective. You got to keep the messaging simple. COVID has taught me how people perceive risk. I see it along the big spectrum in terms of 
how people really have no fear whatsoever to people who are very fearful. So I like to put in context, you know, what does a part per trillion mean when you look at the prefluorinated compounds? It's one second in 32,000 years, right? Yeah. And one part per billion is one second in 32 years. And when you tell that to the people in terms of how minute the concentrations are and where we're at, it, it, it puts it in context. So, so most people get it and, and they feel more comfortable. Stan, what do you, do you anticipate that New York's experiences in terms of the council, that it'll be um, an approach uh, that other states might emulate? I would have to assume that many other states find themselves in a, si a similar situation as New York, where you know parts of the state may have these contaminants, uh, unregulated contaminants, but the federal level, you know, the EPA is not going to do anything about it. So I, I do think that we may be setting the bar for, for other states. You know, we at least had a voice. Um, was it perfect? Did we get exactly to where we wanted to be? For example, with 1,4-DOG saying, I thought it would be much more prudent to, to do a sequential MC. I'll start at a higher level, work your way down to get to where you wanted to be rather than this rush that we're going through right now. Do you, do you have any thoughts regarding, you know, upcoming issues that you'd like to see the council to consider? I think the approach will stay the same, but we've already started talking about perchlorite. We've started talking about algae blooms and disinfection byproducts, so I think those are going to be on the short list. Uh, we have a meeting scheduled in September, mm -hmm. and the council had to ask for more information on those uh, because you know, the health department is ready to move on to the next the next set of uh, regulations. And you'll see the other prefluorinated compounds uh, oh, yeah. also be regulated, I'm quite sure. Yeah. So we'll, we'll be staying ahead of the curve, which is good. But, you know, we want to stress once again, we're, we're all for, for providing safe, high-quality water. Sure. But let's do it in a measured, practical, planned fashion. Sure. You felt the contaminant occurrence information um, was adequate uh, and do you anticipate that developing that information relative to any future contaminants uh, is, is, is going to be something that you really would like to see more of before you reach those kind of conclusions? You know, we wanted to know systems that didn't test under UCMR3, uh, you know, where, where, where was that data? And, and uh, we'd like to see that moving forward. I mean, yeah. to, for us to make intelligent decisions, we want to get a better understanding of the occurrence. Okay. Any final thoughts, guys? You know, we all want to achieve, you know, the best quality water, but if we can move forward, and I think we can, you know, articulate to our fellow members what this is what happened with one for dioxane, this is how quick the process went. And so let's take a, a more planned and measured approach would be, you know, the way to do it. I agree. I think we need to take our time and really look at the implications. Yeah. Um, I think a clear message that I took away from the, this last set of meetings was you can't really place a cost on public health. Okay, well, and you know, in conclusion, I'd like to thank both of you for being here today. You're welcome. Thanks, Thanks a lot. This video focuses on solving emerging contaminant issues within New York. However, there is a likelihood that eventually the whole nation will soon be in the same position and water suppliers across the country will need to address similar regulatory challenges.